I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? Amen. Today we're going to discover in the word of God just where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord. He's the creator of all things. He's the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. So we thank God for creation, but today we're going to focus on honoring our creator. So listen, and I'll see you after the broadcast. Remembering something. Oh my God, I feel the anointing on that. Hallelujah. And they begin to sing this decree. Hallelujah. They say, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you got to know that around them, Jerusalem is known as the city of seven hills. It's built on hills. Hallelujah. So they're looking and they're beholding creation. They're beholding the mountains and they're beholding things that God has put in place. Amen. But they're saying, I know where my help comes from. Hallelujah. I know where my help lies. Glory to God. My help doesn't, uh, it doesn't lie in what I see and what's around me. No, no, no. I'm aware of what's going on as I make this decree, as I make my way to the temple. I know I'm, I'm, I'm making a declaration. Where does my help come from? Hallelujah. You know, we've been teaching, we've been talking about, I ministered a message on looking to Jesus and living, hallelujah. The importance of keep looking to Jesus. Minister Smith just a couple of weeks ago came back and said, look, look to Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at your problem. She even had her sign up that said Jesus so you can have a visual. Keep your eyes, not on this sign, but keep your eyes on him, hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the Lord. So that's what we want to focus on today. We want to focus on where does our help come from? We want to know and understand that our help comes from above. It doesn't come from our surroundings or who is with me or anything like that. My help comes from the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And this is what they were doing. It doesn't come from everything that's been created around me. And as I was studying and, and meditating, my mind went to Romans 1. And in Romans 1, this is what Paul was discussing with the saints in Rome in chapter 1. Because one of the things he said, he said, the people knew God. So that tells me that they had seen the power of God. They've seen the hand of God. They knew God was God. They knew God, but they did not glorify him as God. But what they did instead was they began not to worship the creator. They chose to worship creation. And they made images of birds and corruptible man and beasts and snakes, things God made. They made images of things God made and worshiped it and didn't worship him. So what we're saying now is we have to be very careful. Let me tell you, some things are so subtle. So we have to be very careful of the things we embrace in this season. Amen. You can start out taking an exercise class and you're taking an exercise class and before it's over, things have transformed and shifted so suddenly. Next thing you know, you're sitting in a dark room with candles lit and you aren't doing any more exercising. It's turned into something else. Things like this are going on. Things like this are going on. They're subtle, but you have to have the wisdom of God. Amen? There are so many things. You know, we're getting in touch with nature. You know, the sun comes through my window a certain way, and it brings peace into my home. Or the moon is in its horizon. Therefore, I know what direction I need to take. No, 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 no. All of these things, the creator created as gifts to us to aid us in the earth realm. Amen? Amen. The larger light by day so we won't be stumbling around in darkness. Amen. The lesser light by night. Hallelujah. To keep, to keep our, our, our balance in the earth. Because if the truth be told, you're going to need to know how to have peace when it's cloudy Amen. and the sun is not coming through your window Amen. or when the moon is hidden at night. You're going to have to remember Proverbs 3 and 6. In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall make your path straight. 
Acknowledge him. What do you mean acknowledge? Recognize his authority. Recognize his position as God. Recognize his lordship. Hallelujah. He's going to make your path straight. <clears throat> Listen, I thank God for nature. I do. I thank God for everything. I mean, anybody ever been to the Grand Canyon? You can't do anything but thank God for it or the Hoover Dam or Niagara Falls or some of the other wonders of the world. Thank God for that. There's nothing like getting out in, in your yard or somewhere around trees and the wind is blowing and the grass is under your feet. It brings about such peace and tranquility. Or you go to the ocean and the waters, our waves are beating and the sky is blue and there's sand under your feet. There's such peace. There's such a connecting. Hallelujah. But there's no need of me trying to put some of the ocean in a bottle and bring it home. And set it on the shelf, saying I'm trying to capture its essence. No, you just got water on the shelf. There's no need of me going out into the forest and digging a tree up and bringing it back and trying to make it live in my house saying, well, you know, now I'm going to have peace. The peace doesn't come from creation. The peace comes from the creator in creation. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and all they that dwell therein. Look at what 95 and 5 says. It says the sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. you got to understand, God's fingerprints are all over everything that you see, everything you encounter. He is in it. He is a part of it. Hallelujah. That's why John 1 and 3 says, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Hallelujah. His divine presence. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. His divine presence encompasses everything. Hallelujah. Everything. He's everywhere in everything. Whatever you see, his hand has been on it. If it's living, he's breathed upon it. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, but Pastor Regina, my horoscope said today that I'm going to have a good day. <laughs> Beloved, trust in the one that made the day. Trust in the one that causes day spring to know its place. The one that commands the morning. We've already said it's a day that the Lord has made. If I'm going to worship anything, and any, I'm going to worship somebody that can make a day. Yeah, 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 how about that? Yeah, I'm going to worship me somebody that know how to make a day, glory to God, that can speak and man will live and speak again and he'll die. Hallelujah. That's the person I'm going to worship. The son does not question God. It knows, uh, he's giving me a command to rise, up I go. Hallelujah. I've been commanded to shine. See, I know my place. Hallelujah. I know my place. Hallelujah. Where does our help come from? It comes from above. It comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes, but it's God's doing. Look at what it says in Colossians 1, 16 and 17. It says this. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things, somebody say all things. All things were created by him and for him. Principalities, powers, angelic activity. The spiritual realm. It was all created by him for him. Hallelujah. 17 verse says, and he is before all things. And by him all things consist or are held together. We sung that song last Saturday to the children. He's got the whole world in his hands. You know what? He really does. Hallelujah. He's omnipotent. He does whatever he pleases. Yes, he does. He's not subject to physical limitations like we are. His power is infinite and limitless. He's also omniscient. God is all-knowing. Yes. Nothing takes God by surprise. Don't, don't you think anything that has happened 
has taken God by surprise. Yeah, Nothing. Yeah. Mm -mm. He's aware of the past, present, and the future, all at the same time. His knowledge is total. He knows everything there is to know and everything that's known. God knows it. When we say he's ancient of days, it means that before there were days, there was God. Hallelujah. So he is in control. He is the maker and creator of all things. But guess what? He created them for us to enjoy. Creation has been created for us to enjoy. Amen. This is what it says in 1 Timothy 6 and 17. It says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. We know that. It is so uncertain. But to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Glory to God. He richly provides everything. He has given us everything. Everything has been created for our enjoyment, not to worship, not to put before him. He's our source. Our source comes from come above. Our help comes from the Lord, not the jobs, not the business, not our talents, not inventions, not innovation, not anything, not technology, not what we think, are, what, how wise we are or whatever wealth or, or possessions we've garnered in this world. It doesn't come from that. Our help comes from the Lord. What, listen to what it says in James 1 and 17. James 1 and 17 says this, every good and perfect gift is from above. I'm going to say it again. Every good and perfect gift is from where? It's from above. No, I thought of that myself. That was my idea. Oh, yes. That was from God. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, whether you want to admit it or not, because I'm going to tell you right now, if he's gifted you with something, somebody in the earth needs it. Oh, yeah. Somebody needs it. Unless it's wicked. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly light, who does not change like shifting shadows. God is real. He's not an illusion. He doesn't shift that you moved and the shadow moved. No. No, 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 no. He doesn't change like that. Amen? Every gift, every ability is from the Lord. So we have got to be mindful of not being fixated on things and people, on gifts, and not the gift giver. That's where we've got to keep our focus from. When I lift up my eyes, I lift up my eyes to the Father. Amen? We can't idolize entertainers, politicians, athletes, not even church leaders. We can't idolize people. We just can't do it. Oh, well, see, I, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I read my favorite entertainers' posts. They tweet, they Instagram, whatever it else is they get. I have to read it every morning. But that's not where your help comes from. Your, your help doesn't come from them. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if we all on a boat that's sinking, there ain't nothing. They, they, they can't tweet help. There, there's nothing anyone can do. You're going to need help higher and greater. Amen? At that time. So, no. Our help comes from God. So, when I choose to first meditate on God's word and learn of the good things that God has promised me in his word, there's nothing. Let everything have its place. When I seek God's first and his, his right way of doing things, the things that, that I need to seek to know how to do come from him. Amen. Amen? Let anything else be extra. But don't let it be first. Because that's not where your help comes from. We can't be so tied up in, well, they told me, my political leadership said, don't support the other political leaders because we just not of them. You know, we're not together. We don't get it. doesn't matter what the issues are. I'm not tra telling you don't follow good leadership. Oh, no, no. Always do that. Always follow good God. That's why God gives us leaders. We're supposed to be subjected to authority. Amen. So, yes, we're going to follow good godly leadership, but the, the, the word is godly. 
But what does God say? What is God say? has God said? Amen. What is God saying about the issue? That's the only question I ask myself. I might see the person later. But what does God say? Clearly, I'm going to tell you right now, you can try to ignore it. You can try to say, well, it's not politically correct. I don't care how you try to dress it up. It's going to be an answer right here. There's going to be an answer right here. I didn't make it up. I, I'm not trying to create it. God has said it. And if I'm God's child, I did what men and Jim said. Yeah. Yeah. I was their child. And if they said it, then we did it. Yeah. So if God has said it, then who do I do with who says? I do what God says. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's, that makes life real simple for me. Mm -hmm. Well, God said it. Well, what's your opinion? I don't have one. No. I don't have an opinion. Well, what's your stake on the matter? I said, well, hold on just a minute. Let's find it. And whatever he says then that's what I say as his child. Because that's where my help comes from. It doesn't come from anything. It doesn't come from people fighting and bickering and can't get along. Hallelujah. It doesn't come from that. And for you athletic buffs, you fanatics, football, basketball, baseball, my brother used to make me sick. I said, who, who, who black people like baseball and soccer? I mean, it just had to be a sport. I guess he said, well, they were playing it, so I liked it. But it's like, you like every sport? But it's been put here for our enjoyment. It was put here and created so you can like it. But if you miss church to, no, no, Pastor, I set my DVR, but where's your mind? Is it already on the field? Is it already at the goalpost? Where, where? Is it already on the court? Where? And if you take in your tithe and pay, making sure your cable is paid, you don't know where your help is coming from. If you take your seed money and buy the most popular sneaker that's been endorsed by an athlete, just because you or your child just have to have it, you don't know where your help is coming from. That's not where it comes from. It doesn't come in people and things, it comes from God. So enjoy the gifts, but do not idolize. Do not have a fixation. Do not let them come before God and what God has said. Not if you know where your help comes from. Not even when it comes to your pastor or your church leaders. You don't do that. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Now, here's what the Word of God says in Ephesians 4. In Ephesians 4, the Bible says this. In verse 8, it says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. The people that are our leaders are gifts to the body of Christ. Not someone to be idolized. Not someone to be put on a pedestal. Yes, you honor and respect, but you never get to the place. Well, if my pastor leaves, I'm gone. What God? What did God say? That's not where your help comes from. What does the Lord say about the matter? Why are they leaving? I remember years ago, years ago, there was a, a, a minister, and he had fallen, preached under a powerful anointing, known all over, but he failed. And I would watch him every Sunday on my job because I couldn't get church. I had work, but I would watch him. And then I remember when the fall happened, somebody came running down to my area. Well, what you going to do now? Because they knew I watched him. What you going to do now? I said, what do you mean? Look, I'm looking. What do you mean? What you going to do? Did you hear? I said, yeah, you know what? I said, you know what? I'm going to pray for him. I said, I'm going to serve the Lord. I I'm going to serve God. That's not where my help came from. My help doesn't come from a man. My help comes from the word that the man or woman is preaching. I respected the anointing, and I lived off of the word. The word didn't sin. The man failed, but the word didn't. Amen? God will restore the man. Yes, he will. If you pray for him, if you wish the best for him, stop wishing people will fall. Stop wishing people will fall into error. And let me just say this too. Stop wishing.
pushing for people building to close down. Oh, I wish they had just closed down so the members can come over here. Stop all of that nonsense. That's nonsense. Who ever heard of anything like that? Well, they just over there with them old few small members. They just need to just close down. And what does God say? Where is my help coming from? Whose report are you believing in this season? You cannot idolize. I don't care what the title is. And I speak as a pastor. My responsibility is to care for the sheep that Jesus died for. And he clearly tells me how to do that. And Peter, he lays it out. You better, don't you harm, don't you hurt, don't you misuse, don't you mistreat. I pay for these people with my blood. And I expect you to treat them right. That's the bottom line. You keep that in your mind. I'm telling you, that's the word of God. That's not something I'm making up. I went to the cross for these people. You did not. I'm thankful that I didn't have to do that. I'm thankful for what he did. But your help don't come from me. Your help comes from above. Your help comes from the Lord. Do you remember in Acts 14 when Paul and Barnabas had gone to the place and the power of God was moving? Man, I mean, don't let the power of God start moving. You know, it's easy to get fixated on people when the power of God is moving. But it's my responsibility to tell you, look, look to Jesus and live, baby. Hallelujah. The anointing belongs to God. I'm just a woman like you. But when the people saw the power of God in operation, they saw things they'd never seen before. They saw miracles, signs, and wonders. And the first thing they wanted to do, they named one Jupiter and the other one Mercury. And then they said, we're going to offer up sacrifice. Paul said, not today. No, you will not. Yeah. They fell on their faces. What in the world are y'all doing? We are men just like you. Yeah. You're not going to put me in trouble. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Your help doesn't come from me. Yeah. In other words, it's what he was telling me. Your help comes from God that anointed me on the Damascus road and yeah. blinded me and I could not see until I woke up and realized who I really was changed my name, gave me a new determination, put my feet on the right path. That's who we going to worship. Hallelujah. The people are ascending. They're making their way to the temple. They're beholding everything around them. And they're looking to Zion. They're looking to the church where the Ark of the Covenant rests where the presence of God is. Thank you for creation, Father. Thank you for everything that we see. But my help is in you. My help is in the Lord. My help, my help comes from him. And when they begin, when they begin to make this decree, they begin as only people that know their God know how to do. They begin to say things like, he will not suffer my foot to be moved. Hey, glory to God. <laughs> Woo! He'll keep my feet from sliding. Yeah. David said, I was almost gone. Yeah. I almost slipped. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I came into the sanctuary yeah. and God gave me understanding. Hallelujah. Yeah. Was what I was beholding with my eye. You all tripped up about the evil man. You all messed up getting ready to follow the evil man. You mean you're going to slip and trip and go, come to the church, man. Hallelujah. Let me give you understanding of who I am. David said that kept me from falling. Hallelujah. Psalms 37 and 22 says the steps of a good man. They're ordered of the Lord. And God delights in his way. He is not going to order your steps. And if you want him to, he'll keep you from falling, keep you on the right path. Won't let your feet slip and go in the wrong direction. We just read this morning in 1 Corinthians 10 how he will make a way of escape. There's a back door to it, I promise you. If you want to do right, this is something I found out. If you want to do right, you want to live right, and God knows your heart, he knows you want to, trust me, he's going to help you. Oh, yeah, if that's first a willing mind, if there is a willing mind, he will do the rest. He will strengthen you. He'll move. John won't call you today. 
Oh, no, because I told God, I want to walk up right before you. I want to live holy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, right. He on his way. Car broke down. <laughs> whatever it takes, whatever it takes, yeah. he'll help us. Yeah. He'll help us. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yeah. Yeah, he'll help us. If you want help, God will help you. Yeah. He will keep your feet. Yeah. He will set you on a firm foundation. Yeah. Habakkuk said he'll make my feet like hinds feet. Yeah. I'll, I'll, chair, I'll chart territory. Yeah. That I was not able to chart before. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, because I was in my mess. But now God is a keeper. Y'all, he's a keeper. He's a keeper. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me. He heard my cry. Brought me up out of a horrible pit. Hey, out of the miry clay. We used to say muck and mara. Brought me out of the miry clay and did what? Set my feet up on a rock. And established my goings. He set my feet up on a rock, lifted me above everything. Didn't just get me out of the pit. Now he pulled me. It's good. Got to bring us up out of mess and out of darkness. Brought me up out of the clay. I wasn't able to move myself. This stuff is tough. This is a hard situation. But God plucked me up. He didn't just put me in an even place. He set me up higher. It ain't going to get to you no more. Hey, I'm going to set you above this. Hallelujah. We've already been made to sit in heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. Hallelujah. We're on the right hand of God in the spirit realm. We just got to know it and act like it. Hallelujah. He has established our goings. Your path has already been charted. Just don't get off of it. Amen. Know where your help comes from and you won't. Praise the Lord. I pray you were blessed by the word of God today. Now remember you heard in the word today that God will preserve your soul and your salvation. So if you have not accepted him as your savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I believe you're the son of God. I believe he raised you from the dead and I accept you now as my Lord and savior. Listen, we love you. We will see you on next week. Just be blessed in the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feed with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.